Welcome to Scotch Plains, New Jersey. This is Verizon Fios, Channel 22, and Comcast Cable, Channel 34. Scotch Plains Television. Your town, your TV. Scotch Plains Television presents a meeting of the Township Council. And now, from the Municipal Building, the Scotch Plains Mayor and Council. Welcome back. Uh, like to call to order the conference meeting, January seventh, two thousand fourteen. Miss Lucina, I wish to make the following announcement to show compliance with the Open Public Meetings Act, known as Chapter Two Thirty One of the Public Laws of New Jersey, nineteen seventy five. Notice of this meeting is given by sending a notice on December thirty first, two thousand and thirteen, to the Star Ledger. Courier News and Scotch Plains Fanwood Times stating that a meeting of the Scotch Plains governing body would be held on January 7, 2014 at 5 p.m. at the Scotch Plains Municipal Building and followed by the annual reorganization meeting and conference meeting and by posting said notice on the township website and bulletin board in the municipal building and filing the same with the township clerk. If you would please rise for the pledge to the flag. I pledge allegiance Miss Lucina, would you please call the roll? Mrs. Gilanella? Here. Mr. Jones? Here. Mr. Marcus? Here. Mr. Vastine? Here. Mayor Glover? Here. Uh, next item on our agenda is public comment. I see people ready to come to the mic. You know the rules. Please give your name and your address. Frank Vesta sure. Ramaphore. Should uh, someone tell me how many uh, Units are vacant at the senior citizen housing. No, that number hasn't changed since I last spoke to you because I don't have a new report yet. So my last number, about two or three, was based on the last monthly report. And we're responsible for any of you, any money that they don't have? Any, any operating deficit they have, we are absolutely responsible for that. Makes me feel good. Yeah. Know my tax money is going somewhere. We're right. looking out for it. Mr. Thank you. We all want uh, our local government to be efficient and not ruthless. At the council meeting of December 17th, the deputy mayor appeared to be exercised about the property located at the corner of Westfield Road and Westfield Avenue. Uh, her inquiry appeared to be bereft of any information from the municipal uh, professionals. If she had looked into it, she would have found that that property was covered under the uh, Permit Extension Act signed by the governor. We need a council members to be our agent to keep regulations as low as possible. It appeared that the deputy mayor wanted to uh, regulate the way that property looked from the curb. We need the township council to work on, uh, on our high taxes and to make, to make it uh, more affordable to live here. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Good evening, Council. Albert Muller, also wait, wait, a Wait one Muller. second, Mr. Muller. Well, wait, 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 wait. I'm asking, I, I'm asking Mr. Muller. I'd like to move on. The statement you know. wasn't allowed because you know. Just tell him we're going to discuss it when it comes up, and, it, and it's going to come on. Please, let's just try to get this over. Okay. You're going to have a whole opportunity to discuss that. Please, sir. I'll put the comment. Your name and your Howard address. Howard Muller, Ramapoe. First of all, I'd like to wish everybody up here um, uh, a happy new year. Me too. And your, thank you for your hard work uh, in this past year. And uh, for this coming year, you have several challenges in front of you, ranging from the uh, police merger and the uh, SID and uh, the budget and staying under the 2% cap and the like. So we look forward to the meetings where these, those will be discussed uh, in detail. Second of all, I'd like to congratulate our new deputy mayor uh, sitting on your left, your, your, your left-hand man at this point in time. Uh, we wish you all the luck with the best challenges. Thank you. Um, one thing you guys may not may know or may not know, I understand that on this coming Saturday, our uh, U.S. congressman will be at our high school at 1 o'clock 
Uh, I think it's for a question and answer session on uh, topics that he is uh, handling in uh, in uh, Which Washington. One? Congressman Bush Holt. Okay, because we are represented by Lance as well, so I just wanted you to clarify. Oh, I, that's correct. The um, most of the town of right. of, uh, of, uh, of Scotch Plains by Rush Holt. You're quite right. We do have three blocks or something. So if anybody wants to attend from the town council, it uh, might be well appreciated. Uh, and uh, Mr. Lar, thank you for coming back. We, uh, as the earlier meeting showed, we definitely need um, a parliamentarian <laughs> at times. Thank you. Maybe some common sense too. Thank you, sir. Yeah, hi, I'm Mark Van Ostenbridge. I live at 2096 Arrowwood Drive. Um, I've got some of my neighbors back here in the, in the uh, back right corner of the room. Uh, a while back, we had actually uh, drafted a letter um, that has relation to, I believe, some of the topics that are going to be discussed tonight in terms of the redevelopment of Shackamax and Country Club. And in particular, the uh, placement of the townhomes in the center of the, the golf course, which uh, I understood passed uh, maybe a year and a half ago without, uh, well, with, with certainly some discussion. Uh, one of the changes, as we understand, uh, that was agreed to back at that point was a change in the setback provision, uh, which uh, essentially allowed um, some movement or, or, some, or, or the ability to, to change locations of particular structures. And uh, one of the issues that we've got is that uh, because the condominiums are now going into the center of the pool, or excuse me, the center of the uh, golf course where the pool was, it's our understanding that the pool is now going to be moved to the very edge of the golf course and uh, nearly abutting uh, certainly the, uh, some of the backyards at, uh, uh, on Arrowwood Drive and Dogwood Drive. Uh, the folks at Shack and Maxon have hosted a meeting for us, for the neighbors. And they've talked about their plans to um, have events uh, out by the pool. And we're certainly concerned about uh, the noise from those events, uh, both during the day and in normal usage, and also any events that they might be having, uh, certainly with music and, and otherwise. So uh, I noticed that a noise ordinance is also on the table today. And uh, I really just wanted to represent the concerns of the, uh, of the neighborhood and, uh, and let you all know that we're very, uh, uh, very uh, interested in this this topic thank you for your your comment good evening my name is Guido Pasucci at 436 Sanger Place Scotch Plains New Jersey uh, I believe this is our fourth meeting and I'm coming over there with the issues of Darby Road with their entertainment uh, that they setting up outside the canopy and the tent that they set up outside. Uh, I've been required a zoning board ordinance for this tent if they do need it. And uh, simply for the past three months, four meeting, we'll be getting the getting around over here. We don't get any answers. And it seems that the day of the meeting, somebody always comes up about two, three o'clock in the afternoon to give us some update. We got this letter this afternoon our concern is that are they allowed to do that? There is a zoning ordinance that does that based on what they got permission to operate on there. That's our concern, noise and zoning ordinance, if they are allowed to do that. According to Mr. Jones, we will not be, this is a letter we got today at 2 o'clock. You know, these letters should be sending out two, three weeks prior to the meetings the way we do certified ladder. We come up with these letters the day of the meeting and we don't have time for our legal department to review this. And eventually this case might have to go into a legal department because we're trying to be a nice people over here, but nobody, everybody's taking advantage of Mr. Pesucci. And I don't take that lightly. You know, people, I might have a concern because I might not speak well English. Well, that's my fault, it's my fault. If people don't understand me, they should say so. I take that as an insult when people have been so nice to get answers and nobody's given us answers. I get this letter today where they say we will not be taking a position on the zoning issue regarding outdoor entertainment and live music on the property since the issue has been abated. If 
erase them, erase them. See something they be, they believe violates the zoning ordinance, and that's what we believe. The past four months, he she can report to the zoning official Robert Lacoste. Now, Mr. Lacoste, the only thing he showed us in concern with the letter today, it's about some plants alongside the building over here, which are gonna do to the zoning ordinance. But they don't clarify if this is a matter of zoning or not zoning. <laughs> now, what we have to do? We have to hire a legal department to find my neighbors? What do I have to do? I, I hire a legal team to find my neighbors over here? I, I mean, I just don't understand. Why can't we get any answer? If it's legal, it's legal. If it's not legal, it's not legal. Sir, I, I don't disagree. And, and yes, you've been here quite many meetings. Uh, to, to bring this to our attention. Um, I, I've shared my sentiment uh, with, you know, um, our manager. I think resolution here has taken much too long and the information has been slow at best at forthcoming. Um, you know, I'm prepared to meet with you again. I mean, I, I regret that, but uh, I just saw that for the first time as well. Recognize that I've been anxiously waiting to see, you know, a response as well. I mean, things do take time, and I respect that. Now that we have it, I think, you know, I'm going to, with our new council, direct you, Mr. Lair, to review what has been scribed, to get some background here. Uh, we're going to have a discussion later about noise ordinances, and I, I just think we have a responsibility. It's one of the subjects that I have as a talking point today to have better communications with the citizens of Scotch Plains. So I thank you for your comment. I will um, personally be back to you. And uh, Mr. Gimes, Mr. Lair, uh, I'd like the three of us to sit down this week once again if we can, or for the first time now with Mr. Lair. Uh, and if necessary, I mean, if there's no objection, I don't see why the gentleman why can not, you know, be with us so you can hear Mr. Lair firsthand his ongoing concerns. Would that be appropriate? So we'll, we'll, we'll set up the Mr. John, do you want to set up the meeting or do you want me? No, we'll set it up. Thank you so much. Thank you. I just want to make one point on that. The letter that I wrote today was in consultation with our zoning officer and it very clearly spells out what the law is as it relates to zoning violations and that's why we will we are not take we don't take positions on what may or may not be a zoning violation until it happens one comment about that Katie. may i allow a please why not listen it's either i get wrong messages from mr lacosta or either you get wrong messages from mr lacosta now this issue of the zoning board Nobody brought this up to him as far as this tent is concerned. Nobody brought this concern to him to say to him, yes, it's they allow to use township <laughs> property for dumpsters. Yes, they allow township to put their walking boxes up. This issue was never discussed with Mr. Lacasta. And it's too bad that Mr. Lacasta is not here. Now, I don't know how you get this information, and I don't know how you get my information. If you read over here, I'm going to have you a letter from Mr. Lacoste today. Mm -hmm. So this way, we, I went on the same page. Would you please read the letter from Mr. Lacoste? Uh, let, let's see. Mr. Mayor, I think that because of you coming in. No, no, I, 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 you know, please understand. Please, 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 please listen. You know, the gentleman has been more than patient with us. You know, he's. We've had our first meeting almost two months ago, or it seemed, oh, yeah. right? And, and I mean, I don't want to, you know. If, if you would indulge me, please, one more. I mean, I, I know you've been very patient with the town. I've been very, very, very patient. And, and, uh, but we do have, you know, uh, Ms. Lallero with us today. I have had a very good working relationship with Ms. Lallero over the no, we had, years. We had a work, working relationship right. with this firm. So, 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 you know, so, so I mean, would you at least allow me to just take this offline with them this week, with you in attendance, to have this discussion? I will. Sorry it's about the other No, no, no. Listen, yeah. listen, listen. Uh, uh, you know, you, you've, been, you've been a valued yeah. member of our community. You have been a valued member of our community, and you deserve... Yeah.
Neres, if you could be here. Neres, you press down. I'll cut it short because I know you guys are busy. No, no, no. There is 20 of my family members, immediate family members that live in this town and pay taxes on 20 houses. 20 of my immediate family members. We've been next door to the fire department for the past 48 years. My wife was born and raised there. I walked into this building more times these past four months than I did the entire 48 years. This back here used to be paradise and nobody can have better neighbors than I do. Fire department and police department. Nobody can have better neighbors than that. They're very respectful and everything else. Why we have to come to this discussion, I just don't understand it. I mean, it's simple as that. I don't know. I, I, maybe I don't make myself clear. No, no, no. I think you've made yourself abundantly clear. And thank you. Thank you. I thank you. Carolyn Perkins, Westfield Road in Scotch Plains. Happy New Year to all of you. Happy New Year, Mr. New Year Mr. Lair, welcome back. I'm sure you're welcome pleased back. to be here. <laughs> um, two things. I had called and reported a dead deer on the corner of Westfield Road in US 22. It's on the southwest side. It's been there for a month. Now, I know police officers, people go by. I've called, I don't know the number to call. Uh, in regard to Mr. Pastucci's concerns, I have to say I sympathize with him, but I think some of the problem here is we have a wonderful restaurant, which my husband and I attended for the Oktoberfest. The tent was overwhelming and the music was very loud. We left the tent because we could not sit there and eat and enjoy ourselves. So noise control is an issue. I mean, even older people who have a problem hearing could not stand <laughs> being in there, okay? But the restaurant has done a wonderful job. It's a, a center of town attraction and more things like that would be good for our town. So hopefully you can resolve this with them fellows went to school with my son and I know they're trying very hard so good luck to you could I ask a question about the deer with yeah. all this cold weather do you think the meat is still good I don't think so but it's still there no councilman Vestine I would suggest that you take some of that meat and enjoy it I'm happy to prepare it ladies and gentlemen <laughs> that seemed what somewhat personal act two is there anyone else would like to come before the mic? Hello, how are you? Hi, how you doing, folks? Joe Mortarula, um, Darby Road in Scotch Plains. I just listened to <clears throat> some of the comments that were made, and I just want to um, let, let you know I am available for that meeting that you want to have sort of sidebar. Um, just please let me know the time and place, and I will be there to join into the discussion. All right. You, you understand. Well, thank you. We'll, 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 we'll take you up on that order. Realistically, Listen, we want everybody to play nice in the sandbox in this town. We get it. We, your value, you know, addition to the town, we, we got to get beyond this. We will get beyond this. I'm certain when, you know, comma heads prevail Great. on both sides. Great. Thank you. We're just trying to do what's good for the community. Well, I simply put, fully for believe the better that. good. Thank you. Yep. Does anybody else like to uh, address the council? Mr. Smith? <laughs> it's getting dull here. Uh, that's how we'll close the public hearing session. I'd like to move on to new business consent agenda. I hate saying that. But with that, is there a motion, Deputy Mayor, uh, to move the new business consent agenda? Certainly, Mayor. I'd like to move the new business consent agenda, resolution number 2014-31, 2014-32, 2014-33, 2014-34, 2014-35, 2014-36, 2014-37, 2014-38, 2014-39, 2014-41, 2014-42, 2014-43, 2014-44, 2014-45, 2014-46, 2014-47, 2014-48, 2014-49, 2014-50, 2014-51, 2014-52, 2014-53, 2014-54, 2014-55, 2014-56, 2014-57, 2014-58, 2014-59, 2014-60, 2014-61, 2014-62, 2014-63, 2014-64, 2014-65, 2014-66, 2014-67, 2014-68, 2014-69, 2014-70, 2014-71, 2014-72, 2014-73, 2014-74, 2014-75, 2014-76, 2014-77, 2014-78, 2014-79, 2014-80, 2014-81, 2014-82, 2014-83, 2014-84, 2014-85, 2014-86, 2014-87, 2014-88, 2014-89, 2014-90, 2014-91, 2014-92, 2014-93, 2014-94, 2014-95, 2014-96, 2014-97, 2014-98, 2014-99, 2014-2000, 2014-2001, 2014-2002, 2014-2003, 2014-2004, 2014-2005, 2014-2006, 2014-2007, 2014-2008, 2014-2009, 2014-2010, 2014-2011, 2014-2012, 2014-2013, 2014-2014, 2014-2015, 2014-2016, 2014-2017, 2014-2018, 2014-2019, 2014-2020, 2014-2021, 2014-2022, 2014-2023, 2014-2024, 2014-2025, 2014-2026, 2014-2027, 2014-2028, 2014-2029, 2014-2030, 2014-2031, 2014-2032, 2014-2033, 2014-2034, 2014-2035, 2014-2036, 2014-2037, 2014-2038, 2014-2039, 2014-2040, 2014-2041, 2014-2042, 2014-2043, 2014-2044, 2014-2045, 2014-2046, 2014-2047, 2014-2048, 2014-2049, 2014-2050, 2014-2051, 2014-2052, 2014-2053, 2014-2054, 2014-2055, 2014-2056, 2014-2057, 2014-2058, 2014-2059, 2014-2060, 2014-2061, 2014-2062, 2014-2067, 2014-2068, 2014-2069, 2014-2070, 2014-2071, 2014-2072, 2014-2073, 2014-2074, 2014-2075, 2014-2076, 2014-2077, 2014-2078, 2014-2079, 2014-2078, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 2014-2079, 
um, street sweeping materials from the street, same thing. Morris County Co-op this time doesn't require competitive bidding. Uh, number six is the extension of a contract for another three months while we go out and get the new specs ready for the new contract. That is only for three months there will be a new contract. That's consistent with the local public contracting law. Uh, number seven, 2014-35 uh, New Jersey State contract auto parts. Uh, auto, auto parts and accessories, New Jersey State contract does not require competitive bidding as well. Um, 36 is also an extension of contract for tire services and mechanical repair. Again, that's only for three months consistent with the local public contract law while we continue to prepare specs. Um, and 100, uh, number 37 is your standard 100% veterans exception for property taxes. Mr. Jimes, will we be paying welding materials fines again this year? How would you like that meat? <laughs> we, ha we have a, a motion, we have a second. Can we have a roll call on the new business consent agenda? Mrs. Gilanella? Aye. Mr. Jones? Aye. Mr. Marcus? Aye. Mr. Vastin? Aye. Mayor Glover? Aye. Uh, do we have a motion on resolution uh, 21438, Deputy Mayor? Yes, Mayor, I'd like to move for approval resolution number 2014-38, resolution authorizing transfer of funds. Is there a second? Second. Any comment before we uh, call the roll, Mr. Gimes? Uh, standard transfer to funds um, requires a supermajority vote, which is why it's been pulled off the consent agenda. Okay. Um, with that said, does anybody have any questions regarding it? Hearing none, can we call the roll, Ms. Lucina? Mrs. Gilanella? Aye. Mr. Jones? Aye. Mr. Marcus? Aye. Mr. Bastien? Aye. Mayor Glover? Aye. We have a motion on the uh, new bill list. Yes, Mayor, I'd like to move for approval the bill list uh, for the period ending January 7, 2014, in the amount of $255,724.50. Is there a second? Second. Can we please, any questions on I the bill? I do. I have a question. There you go. Um, the manger is on the bill list. Um, I like the manger. We visited the manger. But my concern is this. As far as I know, it wasn't an initiative vetted through recreation at any commission meeting that I attended. I don't believe it was run by you as the township manager. I don't believe it was run by the mayor. Um, I'm well, not I saying, <laughs> I'm, I, I have no, um, I, my question here is more about process. Uh, it's a $2,000. I, I think we have an explanation on it, so. Okay. Yeah, we Mr. actually Jones, discussed please. this earlier tonight, but um, you're partially correct. Oh, yeah. On some of it, it was actually brought to my attention prior to the last meeting. The part that was brought to my attention was that the same group of private citizens that have done this for the last decades, as far as anybody can remember, with the exception of one year, was going to do it again. Um, the money was paid for with donated funds. Um, what was news to me that where some kind of communication broke down from the last meeting was that the money was actually being written to the township, and the township was then turning around and uh, distributing those funds. I did not intend for us to be the collector of those funds. My understanding is that for the last 60 something years this has been done. That's how it's been done. I don't think it's a good practice. Um, and I've already talked to you know, some of the people involved or one of the people involved and said, you know, we're going to address this differently uh, next year. Please don't mistake this as a recommendation to remove the manger. I'm just, I was surprised because we had had this conversation. Yeah. I know that um, there was some reaction to it at the last meeting and I was surprised to see it on the bill list. I'm sorry that yeah, I no, didn't fine. reach out too okay. sooner for clarification. Can we have a roll call on the bill list, please? Mrs. Gillanella? Aye. Mr. Jones? Aye. Mr. Marcus? Aye. Mr. Vastin? Aye. Mayor Glover? Aye. Uh, management discussion items? Mr. Jimes? Sure. Uh, we're going to discuss again the proposed police equipment. Chief Mahoney is here to discuss it. Last meeting has been discussed some times before, and now I'll turn it back over to the Chief Mahoney. Uh, okay. Um, I guess I should probably just ask the council if there's any specific questions because, in fact, if we all remember after the uh, Superstorm Sandy, uh, I took over as the emergency management coordinator for the better part of a year or so now. We've uh, rewritten our emergency management. 
this this building was was completed somewhere circa 1972 it was built with money that was given to the township by fema at the time it contained an emergency operations center in the basement that was fully outfitted and capable of monitoring our our police communications our phone system uh, eventually our 911 system that system and that room in the basement was destroyed over the years and for lack of anything else became a garbage dump uh, after the storm we took steps to to improve our ability to monitor disasters and this uh, proposal was part of it so if there's any questions well, please fire away actually I, I i think there may be a little bit of a miscommunication because i had asked um i think twice for a full presentation on exactly where we stand as far as emergency management. And I think what happened was when there was discussion at the last meeting, I said, well, let's bring, you know, let's bring the chief and let's have a presentation as to where exactly, I didn't ask you. No, I know, that would be great, but nobody asked me that. I follow the rules. Mm -hmm. I talk to the manager, which we'll get back to later on. Okay. So um, my issue is, I mean, and again, now I'm a little scared because now when I hear things like we're nowhere near ready, that's a concern of mine. And that's really where I was thinking because I was wondering what have we done differently? Where are we updated? You know, where exactly have we made strides? So what I'm looking for is something more than really an explanation of the portable 911 system. And there I think just what happened was the timeline and the amount of money, um, and six months is a long time and it was a really large amount of money. Um, which I think the, the refresher, and the, it was a December 20-something meeting. This is January. It's a relatively small investment in public safety. But. I would never be the one to vote against money for public safety, but I do believe an informed public is a healthy public. So um, I don't know, maybe then we need to revit, maybe need, then today needs to be the conversation on the 911, but I'm gonna again submit my request for a very, official update on where exactly we are on emergency management. I'd like to see those procedures, the policies, the changes. I have concern even about the headquarters being downstairs because it's in the middle of a flood zone from my understanding. You know, what happens if we flood out? So there's, there's concerns that I have. Um, the 911 system is portable, so we take it with us. And we on the raft? And we reestablish another How command center. On the boat? Do you, are you buying a boat? You have a boat, right? I do have a boat. Okay. So my point is that it's late. I get it. Um, I think we can discuss the 911 system. But, Jerry, I really think the public would like a very detailed, up-to-date understanding of where exactly we are as far as emergency management, what changes have been made. We've heard, you know, a great deal that there were some, some concerns that needed to be addressed. So, you know, I serve the public. Uh, let me just pose this question to the chief, because obviously half the year predates my tenure here. Um, this proposal that you're submitting, uh, or that you're here to talk about today, that you submitted back in the capital budget discussions, in ballpark percentage-wise, if you said, you know, how, what percentage does this represent the upgrades that were needed post-Sandy? <coughs> Uh, like post, Sandy, post Sandy, it's a significant step. I mean, the, the, the basic tenets of emergency management from the federal level to the state level to the county level start with having the ability to monitor and, 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 uh, and, and deal with a, with a disaster. And one of the first things that any basic course will teach you in emergency management is you need an operations center in order to be effective in doing that. In Sandy, we had a town hall meeting that I chaired uh, and fully admitted that our personnel were scattered all over the place. We, di we didn't follow any plan that we had in place. Well, let me rephrase the question. But, Actually, I thought I of a think, better way. I, th I think to your point, percentage-wise, we may be halfway there. This may get us 80% there. Mm -hmm. um, part of the, uh, some of the discussion I understand is the amount of the capital ordinance as, as opposed to the amount of the proposals that were that were that are initially on the table now that overall amount uh, there's still more work to be done there's phone system work <clears throat> that needs to be done there's direct dial numbers that we need to have available to us so we can communicate from downstairs 
the the uh, com there's computer e other computer equipment, switching equipment that we can uh, use the monitors that we're proposing to install, so that we can have everything before us in an organized fashion, so that myself, the manager, the mayor, the department heads can all be in one room and coordinate an emergency like we're taught to do by the feds, the state, and the county. So if this proposal was approved at the next uh, business meeting, you think it'd be fair to say that since a year ago, since Hurricane Sandy, we're now probably, assuming this is approved, 80% where we need to be? I could, I could say that's a, that's a safe estimate. That makes me feel better than not ready by any way, shape, or form. That that I, I thought that would kind of address where you were going Thank with you. your thing. Thank That's why you. I did that. As a, an addition to everybody who's watching on television, we're going to do a good job anyway. Why do you have to make me nervous then? Okay. Okay. Can we move along here? Um, any other comments on that? Why Why can't we vote? I mean, I see it as a manager discussion item, but why can't we? actually vote on the portable 911 system so the purchase well, well, maybe some people have some questions and we weren't planning on doing that today until we uh, are comfortable with it so let's not be, you know get out of ahead of ourselves if that's possible um do you have a comment yes I, I did chief could you just elaborate a little bit about the uh, video monitoring equipment how that works and what, what, what it's we're designed <coughs> to do what we're proposing to do is to install video monitors, flat screen monitors, <coughs> that would work in, in conjunction with the 911 system, the radio system. All our, if you've been you know, behind the desk, all our technologies now are based on video monitors, on, on <coughs> computer screens. Everything is touch screen. Um, we're proposing that we should have the ability to look around the room so everyone could have, everyone involved in the emergency management process would have the same ability to look at what's going on. We can have maps in one screen, we can have a call list on another screen, we can have the radio system on another screen. Uh, you know, we, we can have public works, what, what, what they're doing in a, in a natural disaster like that on another screen. So everyone knows we don't have to go around the room like we did a year ago and hold meetings every day and try to call people in and say, well, what did you do today? What did you do today? Did you do anything today? That's we, we would have the so we would have the ability to computerize the operation center down downstairs. That you're all welcome to see the improvements we've made so far. Uh, you know, the, the mayor got a personal tour and back around the budget discussions, and I explained this entire system that we were looking to implement downstairs and what we were trying to put on the walls and the radio and the 911 equipment that's gone down there. We've already done some of the radio installation downstairs. Have we spent any money on this? Yes. I may. I asked a question. I was told emphatically in writing. Not on the stuff that's that we being, haven't spent any money on this. I didn't say we didn't spend money on the bond ordinance. I said we didn't spend money on the stuff that's being proposed in this request. Okay, but but you know, that's, that's a big difference. That's a bit of a stretch. No, I it's mean, not. It was it's a very big difference. Okay, well, there may be. But so you're saying we spent money of the because a lot of that's being said here, and yes, I did take a tour of it, Chief. But quite frankly, you know, I, I hope you understand why we've asked you to come here. Notwithstanding, we started at $175,000. Now we're spending $114,000. The council's asked to approve $114,000, one line, $114,000, no explanation. Whether there's any maintenance after that, no, there was no, no explanation. Expl the document I had was $114,000, Chief. There was no breakdown. I don't, please, Chief, you know, I'll be respectful to you. Can you try to be, if, if, you, if you think this is unnecessary, then. No, please continue. Well, I would greatly appreciate it, okay? I'm just saying $114,000 warrants at least the breakdown of what the equipment is. Councilwoman asked, you know, several relevant questions. You're building this whole network, and we talked about it too, in a basement that potentially could flood. You, you know, I'm hearing that it's a portable system, 911 system, and I would just like an explanation of what does that really mean. Now, I understand, and I'm really supportive of spending money. No, I'll give on it to you again. I'll, All right, I'll, I'll okay, give it to but you I'm again just, I'm just saying, the, the explanation you know, but, hasn't but do, 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 do this, Well, well, maybe you weren't. May, maybe time has, you know, passed, and some of us may <laughs> not recall it as much. So, and it was put in front of us, and as elected officials, we have a right to ask, not challenge, but ask. All right. Uh, I mean, you have flat screens, you said. 
that are part of this. So I'm trying to understand, are they mobile too, all right, uh, as, part, as part of this effort? I mean, granted, the basement has taken water in the past, okay, which is probably the reason you want to have a portable 911 system. But quite frankly, um, you know, I hear from you 80%, 50%. I come to these meetings and citizens come here and say, do we have shelters, you know, for people who lose heat? You know, you're the OEM manager, okay? Uh, I, I don't know if we've ever really resolved anything formally or could publish something formally. I mean, it's, you know, minus something degrees tonight. If someone lost heat in their house, do they go... Excuse me. Do, do they go to a hotel? We have provisions in place. Emergency management is, is, is... Did we convey any of that just out of curiosity on our, you know, internet, on our television we station? Do, we do convey it all the time. No, but in specifically, this, you know, I saw news alerts from many folks that said, even even PSE and G sends those constant warnings, all right, that, you know, if we, if someone were to, a resident were to lose heat, you know, you say we give constant warning. This, this is going to be part of our communications, which is coming up next. But I think that's all part of a good OEM plan, you know, to know what do you do if, so, if, if in minus 20 degree temperatures or wind chill factors that drive it down so low, what does someone do if their pipes freeze and they have nowhere to go? I mean, they get in the car, turn on the heat, turn on the oven. I don't know. You, but, you but, but that's not really, that, I'm, just, I'm just, I'm not trying to nitpick it. I'm not trying to be so specific. You can't, you can't confuse, though, but, not to cut you off, Mayor, with, with all due respect, you can't confuse emergency management with emergencies. Well, I don't emergency know Emergency management not. takes effect when there's a declared emergency, whether it be in a local municipality, okay. a county level, or a state level. If your pipes freeze in your basement, not, you can I'm not, call not the police. Th that's, we'll get that's you out of the house. You can call a plumber, okay. and the plumber will come and fix the pipes in your basement. But I think it's part of an basement. overall it's community. It's not an emergency. It's, it's part of an that's overall not an emergency. Community. But if we lost power on the north side, I think that would be an emergency. It it, it does not necessitate response. So it doesn't, it doesn't hit the criteria. It does not of, necessitate of, response from so, emergency so to management. The, so to the but point as a that township, as a police department, we have provisions that if people lose heat, and we put notifications out to the public that if you lose heat, we do have warming centers available. The municipal building is a perfect example. The heat is always on in the municipal building. If the municipal building goes out, we make arrangements and, and we adjust and we adapt and we make arrangements to use another area as an emergency map, as, as a uh, so, as, so, as so, a so shelter. Rather than we have shelter you, plans in place. We have I, mitigation I think it would be great. It would be place. great to see something in writing on that front. And, and not, you know, just because I think it would be good to have to be able to publish something like that because people do, believe it or not, Chief, you may be aware of them, come to the microphone and ask us these specific questions. And now we can say, you know, here's a site right on our website, right on television, we'll tell you what the options and the alternatives are. But I'm just going to conclude by asking to say that I don't think, I don't think it's unreasonable, even if we discussed it, to understand how, what's the breakdown of the $114,000? How much, you know, what is the breakdown of it? And I don't think it's unreasonable uh, to ask. You said that this would, we're not prepared, this would prepare us 80%, but you also said 50%. How does this better prepare us? I mean, the nine, specifically, you, you keep making reference to 911. Because we don't have an, an operation center where we can monitor a disaster. We don't have it. So you we don't have what every other town has. Okay. No, no, we don't I'm have what the state to, recommends. No, no, we don't I'm just have trying, what, the, what the county mandates that we have. We don't have what the county has. We don't have what Chief, anybody the, has. The only question I was asking, no, I, I, listen, I'm very supportive of that. The question, what, what, what triggered my question was it says a portable 911. So are we saying, I mean, is now, is it a portable in the event happens of to a, be a byproduct benefit of it? In, in the, it's, a, it's, a, it's an internet-based system that interacts with our 911 system. In the event that the building floods and the emergency generator doesn't work, which then knocks out the pumps that are designed to keep the water out of the building in the event of a flood. So are you saying we're, we're building fail. a 911 in, center in a, in that a has portable fail safe operation? We can take our 911 system 
we can go across the street to the second floor of the firehouse, we can plug it into an internet connection, and we can operate our dispatch from the firehouse. Okay, so we're up we can put it in the trailer in the back parking lot, we can pull up to a telephone pole and clip into the internet wires, and we can operate out of the trailer in the back well, parking lot. That's, that's what I was trying to so say. Through what, a mobile what, hotspot. But what we're saying is that, but we were what you, I think you're saying something a little differently, but I think I understand. What you're talking about is building a state-of-the-art 911 system that happens to be portable. It's not a state-of-the-art. It's all right. It's not. So, we're, we're, it's not. we're upgrading our 911 with we TV monitors and the like. Okay, that happens to be portable. No, we're not. We're not updating our 911 system. Our 911 system operates at the police desk. That's where we dispatch from. What we're doing is we're 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 obtaining a system and we're installing a system of monitors and computer equipment in an operation center that would allow us to monitor and control communications that come from the dispatch area. And it would allow us to properly, uh, it would allow us to properly monitor a disaster when emergency management needs to, needs to kick So in. we're not upgrading or doing anything to the 9 we're just it's creating a, no, an, a, absolutely. the option of moving what we have. We're not moving what we have. Well, what, then what, I mean, what does portable mean to you? Portable says you can move something or you can connect someplace. We need the to, information. We need to we need to have the ability when the dispatch is working at the desk during an emergency. We yes, need sir. to have the ability to a monitor that monitor those communications, which this system will allow us to do. We need to have the ability to use the system as a backup or an overflow in the event of a disaster or an emergency. And this system gives us the ability that should we lose communications at the police desk to take it with us and apply it somewhere else. So maybe portable 911 is what's, what's throwing me for a loop. Because that's what's always being referenced here. So just out of curiosity, is there a breakdown of the $114,000? Uh, yes, I'm going to address that. Yes, there is. Um, I, I just, certainly can understand how with all the amount of paperwork that the council gets you know things could be misplaced um, but there was a very detailed breakdown of every penny of that hundred and fourteen thousand dollars that was submitted to the council on March 26th okay, it includes for over it for 30 line weeks. items so if it's out there and I've been asking you for weeks now for it in fact I was told I would get it even today I have, I have a record of it being sent if for well, some reason I, it didn't you, come you, to your I'll box. invite you over for hot chocolate today it's not there so, uh, but anyway, I, I, I still would like to see it. I mean, I think that's just part of what we were supposed to do. Is, may, I, may, I, may I ask Is there a, a maintenance fee associated with this system? Is there any other costs that are outside we, of the ones? We, we, haven't, we haven't addressed the, the operating budget. In the budget discussions, we're, need to gonna, we're going to need to address emergency management. In the last several years, we've had zero dollars except in, in the emergency management budget line. There's been zero, zero dollars uh, allocated to emergency management over the last few years for any operational expenses. The only money that's been put into that emergency uh, management budget was for compensation of the emergency manager, which, by the way, I have yet to be compensated since I was appointed to the position. But we are going to need to address the fact that we have to put operating monies into the emergency management budget uh, in order to pay for things like the notification system, the reverse 911, for lack of a better term, um, that we purchased, um, there are annual fees for, for things like that, licensing fees and things like that, that we are going to need to spend money on if we are going to be properly prepared in the event of a disaster. Well, I think, I think all that makes sense. I just think we need to have it in a more of a comprehensive plan. By the way, Chief, I, I'm not I'm not making this stuff up. I've been asking for that document. Maybe it was sent to me. I'm sure it was it say it was distributed to the whole council, or maybe it was uh, March 20th. You know, uh, okay. It says it's you know uh, from the uh, Miss Lucina uh, to Miss Lucina from Brian Mahoney. Uh, they are in the council. The CC too. But I've been asking this for two weeks, and all I've been given, and you may have answered my question. All I've been shown was on your 14,301. I don't make it up. Okay, with a little note in front of it for a resolution to spend the money. But anyway, thing I think it plays into an overall evaluation to make sure that you're comfortable, our citizens are comfortable, that there's no gray area or doubt 
that we are investing money to keep the people safe. So. May I ask a question of our attorney? This has been approved through the capital budget. To me, this is getting into what color paint we're going to paint the office. Can this just, can we make a motion to approve what they've already been given approval to do? They've already been given approval as part of their capital budget to purchase this equipment. You can do that by voice vote, yes. You can do that by voice vote. So what I need to do is make a motion that we give them the authority to go out and purchase this equipment as part of the Office of Emergency Management plan, which we have approved previously. That's correct. You have the okay. ability to do that. So that's the motion that I have on the floor is that we vote to give the uh, authority to the Emergency Management Coordinator and our Township Manager to execute on the plan that we have approved previously for the procurement of the portable 911 system and video monitoring equipment. Is, and I need a second. I'll second that. Okay. Um, you know, just brief discussion. As I said, I've been asking for this, ladies and gentlemen, for two weeks. I finally got to see it. It wasn't on our agenda as our conference agenda where we discuss such matters to be voted, taken action, and voted on. It was to be considered for our next meeting. Again, I don't see anything that is troublesome about that. Um, I would have a different opinion had I been given this information on a timely basis. What was approved or what was discussed, can't say for sure what was approved. Certainly there were many discussions. But you go from 175 to 114, I can't get an explanation as to what the difference is and what, if anything, is coming. Are we going to spend? The next sixty thousand dollars anytime soon? Sixty one thousand dollars? We have allocated over have allocated over twenty thousand uh, dollars, probably encumbered in the purchase order system already for radio improvements um, to the same yeah. space that fortunately uh, were also discussed as part of the capital budget uh, discussions. But thankfully I was advised by Ms. Majeski that the the amount of those purchases did not necessitate a resolution and therefore did not necessitate me having to come to the council. Well, Chief, it's always good to see you. But you will come back and do a presentation for us on emergency I would love to. And we would love to have you. Are we, do we have a roll call vote then? Well, then let's, let's, let's go. You know, the difference to. Aye. Mr. Aye. Mr. Marcus. Aye. Mr. Aye. So are you happy that it's unanimous? This will play to our next conversation. Um, but we're looking forward to this. Other, another comment? No, I thought it was Okay. Uh, proposed noise, noise <sighs> ordinance. I think we heard much about this today. Um, you know, I, I had requested that we put something on the agenda. Jerry? Yeah, um, uh, because and I said, why do we have to make this very complicated? There's been a request that outdoor music be uh, prohibited after 11 p.m. and uh, seemed like a reasonable request. And I mean, that's what prompted this discussion and to see is there something out there that this council can discuss, something that they can be shown, something that they can embrace. Sure, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what my research has found. Um, most of what you're going to find with respect to ordinances like this are a smaller part of a larger ordinance with respect to outdoor dining and outdoor entertainment. Um, and then noise ordinances as well. You know, the noise ordinance, based on our discussions, didn't seem like something that, you know, we were interested in because that was too all-encompassing. It requires a, a varying level of certification for a police officer to purchase a noise machines. Ultimately, based on its discussions, it just seemed very simple that we were looking or that you were proposing to the council that we ban outdoor music past a specific time in the downtown business district. If the council wants that in the form of an ordinance, it's pretty easy to write. Yeah, I just wanted it for discussion. I mean, for to have everyone weigh in what they think. I think we might have, uh, we may <laughs> be hearing 
from another group of citizens as well uh, who may have a similar concern with uh, proposed development that's you know coming to our community so ladies gentlemen I'm excited that we have some level of progress in the downtown that would lead to discussion about noise ordinance yay here here I think that that is fabulous I um, I do think we should have discussion and there should be really um, some discussion with our business association. Um, I, I think it would be effective to hear from our business owners. I am absolutely in favor of making this a comfortable place for our residents. But one of the issues that I think that we've faced is that our efforts tend to be disjointed. You know, we have a SID, we have a business association, we have concerned citizens, and what we don't have is an effective way to bring these folks together I mean, I, I'm telling you that we have summer concerts while the library is putting on um, think events for the public. In general, it's time to really start to look at what's happening in the town in a more cohesive way. So while I am definitely um, thrilled that we have a situation in the downtown where people want to be here, um, I do think that tends to um, lend itself to the fact that we need to work on some of our existing rules but that should be a very public discussion so that and, and should definitely involve the business well, owners. That, this is a public discussion uh, you know we can have it amongst ourselves uh, councilman but our summer concerts and no later than 9 30. the mayor a library so i'm just saying we're talking specifically i would just like to hear so if the business association and if the that's scotch plains management corporation uh by majority voted or by their board voted that music you know we're just talking I, I was just proposing outdoor music after 11 p.m. I understand it's wonderful you know to bring a whole lot more people in for this discussion I think we're pretty smart enough we're talking about one thing outdoor music after 11 p.m. but there has don't care what you do in your bar don't care what you do in your wherever so I understand what you're saying that you know listen, no you don't because I that's don't. again I don't respectfully mayor that's not what I was saying what I was saying is historically the problem that we have in moving our downtown forward is that we are tripping over ourselves with a several different disjointed efforts occurring we're not but we're no, not no 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 but can you just please, let me finish my please, thought I stop, please. what I am saying is we have a SID I've been to the SID meetings we have a business association we do cultural of our arts events downtown through the cultural arts committee that may or may not fall under the recreation umbrella. That's still unclear to me. The library does events downtown. What I'm saying is that in general, to make real progress, this should be a conversation that brings multiple people to the table. It shouldn't be something that kind of springs up on an agenda that we really haven't vetted properly. I haven't heard discussion of this at a SID meeting well, you know what? Please, please. Yeah, this didn't just spring up. Gentleman's been here for two months making a request. I'm sorry. We, 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 excuse point, me, point of excuse order. Me, excuse point me, of order. Excuse me. Excuse we me. each have the opportunity excuse to speak me, to this me. topic. She was speaking to no, me. she's speaking to the council, and therefore, when she's done, someone else will have a chance okay. to well, talk. Listen, and buy, when they're done, if you want a second to you, bite at the apple, in, by all means. To you, but in the meantime, please, do you have something to say on this matter? Would you like to address the people who I, have made I would, I would like I'd love council, to hear. Uh, uh, excuse me. I would like Councilwoman Janella to finish her comment without being interrupted. Thought and she then had. give somebody else the opportunity to had. speak had on this topic. I just would like to respect the needs and the wishes of our residents in an open honest conversation because some of the other needs of our residents also is the ability to offset property taxes one of the most effective ways to offset property taxes is to have productive growth of businesses in your community i'm just asking for us to look at this as cohesively as possible in no way am i dismissing the concerns of the vespucci's and i don't believe I believe the request for information is a separate issue than the ordinances, than a noise ordinance. I, I, we're talking about two different things, so I, it's not my understanding that that is what 
the resident in question has been coming to the council to ask for. I could be wrong. Could be wrong. Okay, do you, are you finished? Do you have any other comments? That would that? be it, thank you. Council member? Mm -hmm. No, go ahead, please. Um, I think that this is a place for an open and honest discussion. This is a public meeting, and anyone can comment on this. Uh, I hope there's more time before the end of the meeting uh, to allow that to happen. Uh, I guess we'll have to indulge with uh, <coughs> Mr. Lair to determine whether or not anybody else can make a comment about it. But certainly we, we've heard comments from various people about this. It's a legitimate issue. And um, I think we're here to listen to hear what the public and what the business owners have to say. So. If we need to take action, we can evaluate that. Um, Mr. Laird, do we have do we have any noise ordinance on the books well, that you're aware of? Because I'm really confused. I'm, I'm new to this, but I haven't heard his concerns because I haven't been here. But if, if to, to, to open this up to a public discussion, I think would be a mistake tonight. I think that the right thing to do is if you want to have a discussion about what you want to do about so noise, all that. then then you have a discussion. You can direct me to prepare an ordinance, and then there will be a public forum on that ordinance. Um, so I think I just need to, to reel in a little bit about what your concerns are, and then put it in an ordinance form if that's what you want to do. Just in general, the state does have a, a noise ordinance. Let's be clear about that. The state mandate supersedes and trumps any local ordinance, and it says 50 dB at the property line, decibels, at the property line during the daytime hours up until 10 o'clock. From 10 o'clock until 6 o'clock in the morning, the decibel level, you can, I'm sorry, it's 65 dB during the day, 50 dB after 10 o'clock till 6 o'clock in the morning at the property line. You can't have noise levels exceeding that. Now, how do you do that? Obviously, you'd have to have monitors to do that. It's expensive. But if someone wants to make a noise complaint after 10 o'clock, there would have to be a, 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 a level of monitoring. The way that I think the better way to deal with that is you say for outdoor events, you right. have a certain cutoff. Sorry. That is a rational and reasonable way to deal with or the noise. But I think we need to reel this in local with us before you vet this publicly. You get a sense of what you want to do and then direct me to do it. Yeah, I, I think I would. I think it would offer a different alternative. Uh, before we rush to create an ordinance or anything of that nature, I think one of the more productive ways to start this process perhaps is to get the business owner along with the resident, with you and Mr. Jimes. They don't need anybody else to try and figure out an accommodation, a resolution, I mean, we don't need to be in the business of writing ordinances for one resident or one business when, when I think perhaps there's a way to, to have everybody come together and figure out a mutually agreeable solution. And, and that's a good idea as well, because I've been involved in situations like that where there are neighborhood disputes, where there's ultimately an agreement between the parties that is memorialized, and there are penalty provisions by the owner if they don't comply. I think that's a, a, another good solution, but maybe that's the way to start. Well, so I, I can tell ask, you. So I would ask that, that the two of you could facilitate that with representatives of both the resident and the business to try and get that in a room as, as quickly as possible to try and come to some mediated understanding. I, I can tell you, Councilman, that I've had, I have had discussions with some of the representatives, including Joe, about this, and I'm not ready to disclose the details of those conversations but it has been about this specific issue and the noise complaints as it pertains to live music i am comfortable 100 percent confident that we could work through the issue of live music after a certain amount of time and i agree with you that i don't think it's necessary to write an ordinance based on an event that basically happens one weekend a year very good well you know i'm glad that we're finally you know seeing the light and thank you for your words of wisdom again Jeff. you know it's not my intent to bring the whole community to this. This was just a discussion to see how do we want to handle this. And 
you know, it, to, to go and have a discussion uh, just with the gentleman that lives behind Darby is, is, is just doesn't make sense because as we've just heard, we've got a preview, we're gonna have some other people have a similar concern. So I'm, we're gonna negotiate with everybody? No, this council has to take responsibility and say, what makes sense? We're not here suggesting we pass an ordinance at 11 o'clock. We're not, that's not, it's a discussion, on, you know, about noise ordinance. That's all it is. Not supposed to make any conclusions today. We suggested earlier that we meet with the gentleman and, and, and see if we could resolve it. Jerry, when we met with them last, we thought that this resolution agreement was at hand. That between Darby and between, uh, from your understanding with them, that this matter had been taken care of. But you shared with me that days later you were out there again because it wasn't. And maybe it was a mistake. Someone didn't turn it down. It happens. We get it. I'm sure the gentleman gets it. But this is not, you can't look at this in a vacuum, that it's an isolated problem. All I'm saying is, we've had a discussion, we should continue the discussion, but at the very least, you know, we can still make progress and try to play nice in the sand by getting you all together, even if it's on this one particular, you know, instance. Uh, okay, I am, uh, I'll confirm that, that I am confident that the issue well, good. is just about resolved, and my understanding of this discussion tonight contrary to the title, because noise ordinance, noise ordinance, you think of what Jeff's thinking, you think the actual state noise ordinance. My understanding was we were here to discuss banning live music after a certain period of time in the downtown business district. I mean, that's what our discussions were. And if I might just jump in one second, I would request of the manager that any ordinance that's going to be proposed or be discussed, that it be, we be included in the discussions, because as you well know, knee-jerk ordinances are, are often very, very difficult to to enforce and we would obviously be the enforcement arm of that so you know the implications of saying downtown after 10 o'clock what about the guy on the south side of town who has Absolutely. a band in his backyard it's good that you're here and it's good I input i would like to be uh, excellent be point, which is why we're having the discussion yeah. Yeah. I, I have some things i want to talk to you mayor about talk tomorrow because i don't think it merits a long discussion tonight but there are ways that you can have agreements enforceable and if they violate them, then they can be enforceable in municipal court. There are ways to do that. So this is good. This was a healthy discussion. Yeah. Jeff, I'd love to have that okay. discussion. This was good. And I think hopefully the folks listening appreciate that we can. We always have the right solution. But at least we don't walk away from the problem. Okay, the next item. Is that okay? Is everyone, Llewellyn, any other com do you have any comments? Uh, folks, we okay on to the left? All right, um, communications. Uh, I ask that that be put on there for several reasons. One, I, you know, my principal reason was that we, and, and I mentioned it in my state of the town address, need to control the flow of information that goes out to our residents more smartly. And we may need to make sure that the flow of information as it relates to a snowstorm or a power outage is, 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 is controlled and it's consistent, and it's updated. And um, I just wanted to get a consensus from this council. Do they, do they agree that we need to do a better job? I mean, we have the tools, we have the vehicles, but it's now saying who's responsible for it operationally. You know, someone clearly that would be reporting to our manager, but do we think there's a need for it? Because to the Chief's point before, this piece is over here, this piece is over here, this piece is over here, this piece is over here. Chief, it's akin to what you were saying, okay? Just didn't understand it all before, but the idea is to say, there's a snowstorm, who's running with the notices to the patch? Who's running with the notices to the alternative press, to the, whoever the heck it is, but one central point. Because I found myself writing them the, them the other day and tracking you down, Jerry. And you know what? I, I don't want to be in that business. I will be, but, but I would prefer not to be. I think that was my primary principal concern about communication. My next one is, is com getting back to citizens. I've heard more often than not that we don't get back to citizens on a timely basis. I get plenty of emails on that. You and I have discussed it, Jerry. And I think we've got to come up with a way of making certain that everyone who registers a complaint, be it how real or how significant, it has to be responded to. And uh, you know, I don't know if you all send 
messages from citizens to the manager, but I'd like to know they're responded to and that I get a copy so that I don't have to be drawn into a situation where I'm involved, where I ought not to be, other than the fact that I'm being mindful of you know, a neighbor's con concerns. To answer your question, yeah. Mayor, I send everything to the manager. It's my feeling that, well, it's not my feeling. Under our system of government, it's my understanding that we drive policy. Right. As far as the day-to-day -day operations of the township, they are under the purview of the manager. I don't always agree with some of the things that are occurring. He and I have those conversations. He knows when I have concerns, but everything goes to the manager. So yes, I send everything to him. So I, do I. If I have no, I, I know, I know. But you asked a question, so yeah. I'm answering it. But do you get? But 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 when if it's a citizen's complaining about something, my request I, is simply I hear that back I want to know manager. there's a snow removal. Well, that's my problem. I don't always hear back. I don't know if anybody else has issues like that, but. If we sometimes we do, sometimes I'll get one of his managers, one of the managers to respond. But consistently, I would like to know that because I core dump a lot to you, Terry, or to the manager, because that's our form of government. I just want to know within at least 24 hours that someone's on it. We've committed to the citizen since the citizen has requested me to be involved, that I at least have the courtesy of getting a CC to know what's going well, on. Well, can I ask this? Can that's, I, that, I think that's a reasonable question. Uh, you could ask anything. My, my thought would be this, because I know a lot of times we'll have residents who are concerned, and what they'll do, rightly so, is they go to the, the web page and they get our email addresses and they'll email each one of us. And I can only imagine it's probably pretty difficult for you, because then you'll get emails from five of us. So what I'm wondering is, I can't do a reply all because of the Open Public Meetings Act. You know, if I email, you know, as you and I discussed last week, when you know, the response to the email, <coughs> if I do a reply all, that's a violation of the Open Public Meeting Act because of the members of the council. But Jerry, if one of us sends you an email, could you let us all know what's happening this way we're all not bombarding you with the same concern? Yeah, there, there's actually two points to that. One, yes, obviously. Um, two, one of the things I had looked at recently, um, in my conference trips were some of the online citizen complaint tracking systems so rather than you guys having to get bombarded with emails there is an online citizen tracking they go on they register their concern they send that email and they'll be able to follow the process who of do that. they send it to jerry what's that who do they send this it would go to the system and whoever i designate to be in charge of monitoring well, that because i would want to say this to me i find it very advantageous to hear from the residents because yeah, I you know I, it, well, I think one of the difficulties that we have is it's not that we govern you know a small section of the town and just by nature of the size of scotch plains you know, i live over here and there could be an issue that's impacting a resident over here i do like to hear from the residents but unfortunately based on the system of government i can't drive over there and fix their problem i can't plow their road you know i can't remove the dead deer so all I'm at looking for is rather than five of us reach out to you individually, which I'm sure we all do. I'm sure when we get an email, we say to the manager, you know, a resident reach, can you just, assuming that we've all heard from this individual, let us know what steps. Sure. And this way, it's not like one of us. I, I would have to assume that would be easier for you than hearing from five of us. Yeah, I mean, there's definitely ways to better handle it. I can tell you, and I think most of you probably know this, I, you know, anytime I get a complaint from anybody, it goes to the department head, you know, the second I receive it. You know, the chief often is the recipient of probably more than, you know, Joe, obviously, you know, with DPW generally is next, the two biggest departments, you know, in the township. Um, so it does go to them, you know, you know, we read the, res the emails and the concerns we get, and, you know, some people specifically ask for a response. Some people say, I saw speeding on Main Street, and I hope you guys keep an eye out for it. You know, those... Not every resident asks for a response. And one of the things that I have seen that maybe we can consider, uh, something we can do relatively easily, is when you do that online form checklist, you have a box, do you need a response or is this just a general concern? Then at least we know when that resident's expecting a response. Um, I can tell you that Joe reaches out to everybody you know, who calls him with respect to a DPW issue. So. Well, Jerry, let me make this very simple. When I, in the future, and I don't think, I don't, I'm not hearing any rejection to regardless of what your needs are. I get around this town a lot. I spend a lot of time visiting neighbors, and they write me. You know that. I send things to you. 
I just want to know within, I want a response within 24 hours that it, if that's not unreasonable to you, then tell me 36 hours that a neighbor, that we've res, at least reached out to try to find a solution with the, with the particular neighbor's issue. Sure. I don't, I don't want, I don't want to check box. I'm a keep it simple, <coughs> stupid guy, kiss approach. Look, I send you <laughs> something, it's about Mr. Vastine's complaint about, have fun, Mr. Vastine. Okay. I would be hesitant to put an actual time frame on it, depending on the nature of the complaint. Within 48 hours, should what? we be responding to it? Oh, absolutely. Okay, I, I think Respond 20, you know, in, in, in your hours. role, I would, I would think it should be 24 hours. And then the other issue I'm concerned about is that, as you know, we've had this discussion. Mayor, so are you going to allow anybody else to no, speak on this? No, I'm finishing my point, if you don't you, mind. You've spoken like three times That's on great. subject. That's great. So, when I reach out to you on a Saturday or a Sunday, we've had this discussion. It's a 24 by 7 job, Absolutely. right? I just want to know that I can get a response, because as you know, during the snowstorm, you know, I made it clear I don't want to circumvent any system, okay? But I want to know that I'm not bothering you, I'm not imposing on your weekend, and that if I reach out, that I do in fact get, you know, a message back. Obviously, quickly. this is a because I'm not calling to have coffee. Obviously, this is a 24/7 operation, and um, I think most of you have seen emails from me from various times in the morning, in the night, on Friday, Saturdays, and Sundays, and I could go through my emails and. Know, I think you probably agree with that when I looked at those. So that's never an issue. With respect to being called on a weekend, of course I answer my phone. Um, with respect to the specific issue that occurred over the weekend during the snowstorm, I got two phone calls from you. My phone wasn't on me. It was someplace away from me in a locker someplace. <coughs> and as I finally took the phone, started to get service again, and if you know if you're below a system someplace, you're not going to get service, I saw your two phone calls. I got a phone call from the chief of police, and I saw a uh, text message from the director of public works. So I became fully aware of the issue. I addressed it with the uh, chief of police and I found out what the complaint was uh, from the DPW supervisor who I guess you spoke to. So I'm fully aware of the issue and that's why I didn't call you back because I knew well, the issue. Well, but for the record, don't assume that you've satisfied me unless you call me back. That's all I'm asking. It's not an unreasonable Maybe request. this would be, I know, I, I feel like maybe this would be a more appropriate conversation to not. Well, I'm done. Well, I, I would suggest, Mayor, that you are one of five people, and to assume that the manager is here to serve at your personal pleasure is that. absolutely arrogant, number one. Number two, there are things going on in this town, and if a person in this town has a problem, he sends a comment or an email to you, and that gets forwarded to the township manager, who are you to decide who becomes the priority in that situation? I didn't ask Everything that I've ever submitted to Mr. Jimes as our township manager, as part of our form of government, I've seen a response to, and I have seen a reaction to that situation being taken care of. But quite frankly, I'm personally offended that you would direct the township manager to treat you differently than anybody else up here. You know, Mr. And you Vestine, can deny it. You Mr. can say, Vestine, oh my gosh, you this can't, is the you know, new you know, year. You, you, We've got to be cool We can't, we, we can't, we can't, we can't. Wait, enough. Is, you guys, know, enough. Is, is, this, this, is, this is beyond ridiculous. This is what it's going to be like. This is what it's been like. So do I. This is a joke. This is not appropriate. This is not appropriate at this hour of the night. Thank you. It's embarrassing. I think we should just, we have a lot on the agenda. The people from Toll are still here. Let's move on. Please. I, Jeff, Mr. Lair, I couldn't agree with you. I said in my opening remarks, I was hoping that we could work in a civil way to the whole community. We will have our challenges, Mr. Lair. I can certainly see that. We will have our, you know, what continues? Well, it's going to be an interesting year, folks, so stay tuned. Okay, I agree. Let's move on. Mr. Move on. Uh, the next issue, number 15, proposed safety standard amendments. That's kind of a continuation of the discussion uh, that we had on the specific property in question on Westfield. Sorry, uh, Westfield and Westfield. I've had some other extensive conversations with our, you know, building people on that. Uh, if you don't mind, I'd like to weigh in on that before sure. you go on because okay. it's something that I mean, you know, with I understand, and I'm not really sitting up here to have a dispute, an ongoing dispute with a member of the public. But as you know, and as been, has been just mentioned several times today, when I have a concern, I call you. Sure. I don't call the individual department heads. 
I understand that Mr. LaCosta is our zoning officer. I understand this. Because I am not acting as a private citizen in this capacity, this is not my neighbor, this is not my neighborhood. I am calling in a very official capacity. I have spoken with you about this on several occasions, and I spoke with the previous township attorney about it on several occasions. And to Mr. Jones' credit, I believe it may have been him who may first made the comment, it may have been me, I don't, I'm not exactly sure, but I believe I was not the only member of this governing body who felt that if the rules were not sufficient to address this, maybe we need to re-examine what options are available to us. My concerns are twofold. Aesthetics are one. Yes, this is in the center of our town. Mm -hmm. To me, it's a making a mockery of the people who live there, the people who do business in that area, the people who worship nearby. My other concern, though, is that I'm not convinced that it's not a safety issue. We've had numerous conversations at these meetings that I am far from impressed from the level of service we've gotten from our Board of Health. I don't know that there's a health concern there. All I've asked is for an investigation. I'm not sure where that individual resident got his information from, but I absolutely did do the research. I'm just not satisfied. So that's, thank you. It seems to be that the recourse, and I've talked to Jeff about this a little bit, would be to, if possible, try to make our standards tougher than what's already, what already exists. Because the, based on what already exists, it does, it's not deemed a health violation, it's not deemed a safety violation. It's certainly an eyesore, we don't disagree. Uh, but based on the laws on the books that we have now, we really have to determine one, if it's feasible to make our standards stricter, if it's even allowed, depending on certain things. And two, if we were going to do that, what recourse would we be looking for? You know, yeah, so at that understand point. There, are, there are construction code issues under the Uniform Construction Code, and I heard someone mention about the Permit Extension Act. That is true. But that, there are, you have to divorce that from a property maintenance code. A property maintenance code would allow certain things to be enforced if. That, that actually do go to aesthetics, and that do go to maintaining your property in a proper way. Um, you can tighten up your property maintenance code. Um, the, a violation of that property maintenance code will go with notice of violation, and then ultimately, if there's a failure to evade, to go to, to go to municipal court by way of a summons. I can discuss that with Mr. Johns um, and ways to tighten up your property maintenance code. Thank you very much. I don't know if you know the specific property in question. Thank you very, very much. I appreciate it. Yes, I, I would just like to say, uh, I, I just think as a matter of practice, that when Mr. Gimes is about to speak and tell us something, that we should at least give him the opportunity to speak and that he not be cut off before he's able to state whatever it is he's about to tell us. Sure, just to give you some insight there, when um, the gentleman was up at the microphone and specifically mentioned me by name, I asked for the mayor to recognize me so that I could respond to him and was not granted permission to do so. So um, both Mr. Gimes and the mayor felt that I could address this when the issue came up later on, and that's, that's why I was well, very eager. That, that's fine. It, it was me, it, he named me personally. You know, and the information I, wasn't I understand, accurate. But, you know, everyone's entitled to state their position, but so is Mr. Gimes, and he's the town manager. And I think when he when he speaks, we should at least give him the opportunity to speak without being interrupted. Okay. Uh, any other comments on this matter? Not on this particular matter, but I do have something that I did wish to discuss. Okay, but, uh, can we go on? Sure, we absolutely. Have been waiting oh, have they been waiting? For about a part of three hours now. Toll Brothers presentation. Redevelopment of Shackman. Don't get up so quickly. Good evening. For the record, Mark Pulley Castro, attorney for Toll Brothers. Um, we're here as required under the redevelopment agreement to demonstrate that the project is consistent with the plan. So I have uh, two, two witnesses, Mr. Rocco. We will introduce and get right to it. Please state your name for the record. Oh. Uh, Anthony Rocco. I am the uh, division president for Colbert, New Jersey. 
briefly describe the project for the public and the members. Okay, well, um, let me just uh, explain that we're here tonight um, as the redeveloper of the residential portion of the Shackamaxon Golf and Country Club. Um, as many of you are aware, the property is, is subject to a redevelopment plan. And uh, several months back last year, um, I believe it was actually during the spring, uh, there was a specific redevelopment agreement that uh, spoke more specifically to the property. It was uh, passed. Uh, and uh, that, that redevelopment agreement um, established some very specific standards under which the, the property was to be developed. Um, as part of our responsibility, as part of our requirement, I should say, as the uh, redeveloper, we have to come before the mayor and council, and we have to uh, submit anything uh, prior to submitting it to a planning board to show that our redevelopment uh, project is consistent with both the redevelopment plan and the redevelopment agreement. So that's what we're here to do. Can I address in the number of units, the type of the product, just the basics, basic overview? Sure. Can I pass out one? Sure. 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 Um, as far as the plan is concerned, uh, our engineer, uh, Michael Azabama, is going to speak uh, more specifically to the plan. I'm just going to give you a general overview. Um, the plan at this time consists of 56 attached active adult homes. Uh, the homes range in size from approximately uh, 2,600 square feet up to about 3,200 square feet. Uh, they are all two-story homes uh, because they are designed for an active adult buyer, meaning that they are over 55 years of age um, they do not have any school-aged children residing in their home. They are mastered down for the most part. We do have one, one floor plan that is featured uh, in, in what I handed out tonight, which happens to be a, uh, a master up plan. Um, we uh, will probably be changing that as well to a master down. But uh, they, as I said, they predominantly appeal to uh, the active adult buyer. Two-story, two-car garage, and they are attached. Uh, Three. 56 units long. Three bedroom three bedroom and there's an option for a fourth bedroom. As I stated, the master bedroom is down and the balance of the bedrooms would be up for, uh, for guests. It, that's all we have on that front. If there are questions from Mr. Rocco on those specific issues, now might be a good time to direct those questions. Whatever your, whatever your pleasure. Okay, are there questions from Mr. Rocco on those issues presented? Are you okay? I would like to present some engineering testimony. Please state your name for the record. Certainly. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is Michael Lanzafama. I'm a professional engineer, land surveyor, and planner with the firm of Casey and Keller Incorporated in Milburn, New Jersey. Um, we've been engaged by Toll Brothers and Golf Partners to assist in the development of uh, this plan, which is consistent, as Mr. Rocco said, with the redevelopment ordinance. Uh, what we're proposing to do, as he's pointed out to you, is to take about a 14.6 acre parcel of land in the central portion of the golf course. This is the area that was previously occupied by the original swimming pool, cabana, um, tennis courts, and parking areas. So the area that we're proposing the townhouses in is an area of prior development. It's a, an area that had a significant amount of impervious surface already located within it. The primary uh, point of the, of the redevelopment and the most important part that I think to the benefit of the neighbors in the area is the fact that the primary entrance to the golf club and to our development will now be from Lambert's Mill Road as opposed to the local neighborhoods in Shackamax and Drive. Um, the access from Shackamax and Drive will only be preserved as an emergency access point and will not be used in uh, any way, shape, or form as a access to the facilities once this development is constructed. The access road from Lambert's Mill will uh, utilize an existing culvert that's over uh, part of the stream corridor that comes and feeds Shackamaxon Lake. Um, 
the development will also permit access directly to the country club building itself that main driveway coming in off Lambert's Mill Road will break left to go to the townhouse development and forward you'll end up right under the port of share of the existing clubhouse um, uh, as You can see the, the major roadway coming in off Lambert's Mill Road, breaking to the left, you will see the feed to the townhouse development. You can see a, a loop type road pattern which provides for easy access into the facility. Each unit will have a two car garage with the ability to park a car in front of each garage as well as visitor parking in a number of key locations throughout uh, the development. There will be walkways that will provide the ability for members of the community to interact with the golf club, to possibly join the golf club, and act uh, as members of the golf club. Um, the project is restricted to 55 and over. No school-age children will be permitted in the development. Um, and that will have uh, a significant benefit to the community as much as when you analyze the tax rateables that this could generate, the uh, potential payback to the community is going to be significant. Um, there will be a number of uh, measures that will be provided to control stormwater. Um, there will be a number of surface and subsurface detention facilities that will collect the runoff from both the roof areas and the roadway water not only control the volume, but the quality of the runoff. The runoff will be purified so that at least 80% of the total suspended solids would be removed from the water column prior to entry into Shackle Madison Lake. There will be no development um, below the flood hazard elevation, and the riparian buffer along the perimeter of Shackle Madison Lake will be preserved. Um, that's primarily in a Are there variances control. proposed at this point no, that's straight from the, the plan? No, there's no variances. Uh, we, we believe that we're in full compliance with the redevelopment plan. The redevelopment plan allows up to 60 units. We're proposing only 56 here. And you can see um, the areas, uh, Arrowwood Drive is not even shown on here because it's so far removed from this area. You can see where the existing parking field and golf club are located. So these are at least 400 feet from that property. So. I'm so, can I? Let me just say a few things before we start. Okay. Uh, just to lay some ground rules about what this is and what this is not. This is not a site plan application where they will ultimately, when directed, and you're okay, that is consistent with the plan, they will then go and be directed to go to the planning board where issues such as sidewalks, lighting, drainage, um, uh, circulation, uh, landscaping, landscaping um, access, Parking, all those issues will be ultimately decided by the planning board. That's their function. Your job is just to determine whether this plan is consistent with the redevelopment plan that you adopted by ordinance. That's your role, pure and simple. Uh, you're not site planners. You're not telling them where they can put their units, where they can put their parking, where they can put their lighting, and where they can put sidewalks and and, and all the detail, their landscaping. Those are issues not for you. What That's about what the swimming pool? Board. That's the planning board? Correct, it's a planning board function. What you're really asking them, what you're really looking at is to determine whether this plan, this plan is consistent with the redevelopment plan, which is essentially a zoning ordinance. It becomes a zoning ordinance for this project. So I've spoken with Mr. Paula Castro I put together a draft of a resolution for you. I have just been brought on. I would like the opportunity to look at the plan and your redevelopment plan to determine whether it is consistent and give you my opinion. And then I will ultimately come back to you at the next meeting. Um, but understand that you're not site planners. You're not gonna tell them where they're gonna put their landscaping. That's not your role. Can we ask a question of curiosity? Absolutely. Today? My fellow councilman's uh, question. 
we've heard some rumors about a pool. Where, where, right. you, where is uh, that being suggested? We're not the site planners, but right. But be aware that there's two different entities involved. I, I understand. Toll Brothers has been um, de designated the redeveloper of the area for the townhouse development. There's no pool proposed as part of. So this the may be the Shackamax and folks. Shackamax and Country Club under the Golf Partners Association is proposing to create a new pool area in the vicinity of this back parking lot. I see. So that will be coming to you as a separate application. No, we're not here. For the, not here. Zoning to the zoning board. To, 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 to the zoning board. Well, that's right. That was the answer to That's my question. Okay. And then the only other. I think it's a zoning board application. Well, we've been going back and forth with Mr. Lacoste. Ah, okay. All right. All right. So, so, so just, just that is a, a curious question uh, that may relate to you know the original proposal, Jeff. We've heard about Lambert Snow Road. We spoke about that. I'm comfortable to know you're going through there. But during construction, I was most concerned that Shackamax Drive not be used. You know, for the initial construction, the demolition, yes, but not to build 60 units using Shackamax Drive. I mean, what is your plan? That's not our intention. Okay. I, I would, well, before you even go, it's not it's not even a question of intention. In yeah. the redevelopment agreement, it spells out what their obligation Right, that's is. what I'm just saying. I want to just go back to that. Let me read it to Let me read it. It says, upon completion, it's, let me just start earlier. It says, redeveloper agrees that access to the golf course property shall be located to Lambert's Mill Road, subject to the approval of the county. Then goes on and says, it is recognized that access to and from the golf course property through Shackamax and Drive shall not be impeded in any way. Once the redeveloper has completed construction of the relocated access, and such construction has been approved by the township, all access for both the project and the golf course shall be through the relocated ex access, except for emergency access. It is expressly understood and agreed by the redeveloper that thereafter no unit owner of the project or its guests, contractors, subcontractors shall have the right of access through Shackamax and Drive. Upon completion of the relocated access drive, the current access along Shackamax and Drive will be closed and used only for emergency access purposes. And here's the critical language. The redeveloper shall commence construction of the relocated access promptly after receiving all required approvals and will complete the relocated access to base coat paving within five months of such commencement. So once they get all their approvals from the planning board, from the county, from the DEP, they have to start building that road. And it has to be completed within five months and absolutely prior to the issuance of the first yeah, I just CO to, for the first you. unit. I know we talked and negotiated yeah. that. Okay. So I just want you to understand that before they get their first residential unit CO, that roadway has to be in, that access road. Now. Okay, let's go back to the, the concern. I would ask this then, and I know you have a great deal of experience with zoning issues. Prior to this group coming before either the zoning or planning, and I'm sure that will be determined, will the residents in that area be, be notified? Yes. Okay, and I, I'm asking some of these questions because I, I would like people to hear them. Right. It is a planning board application, by the way. Okay, now. Mr. Gimes, and this is where I think this is this piece is is important. What um, we there will be a list of our new zoning and planning board members available to the public on the website. Yes. Is there an ability for members of the public to contact the chair of those boards through email? I'm not aware of that. As a typically, um, and normally the answer would be no. If I were the board attorney, I would say no because they have the opportunity to come to a hearing, they have the opportunity to review the plans at town hall, okay. and then come to a public hearing and ask all the questions they want. So there will be notice. What is the distance that the residents? 200 feet in all directions of that lot. Well, actually, we had agreed that the notice would go from the entire golf course. Ah, okay. The entire lot. So it's, five, it's 200 feet from the entire golf course. But 200 feet isn't really far. But that's law. And okay, no, 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 I, I'm a, so I'm asking about that. Yeah. So could we then, to um, 
could we make certain that the website reflects prior to, because this is a very large issue that has the potential to really, in, prior to the appearance before the planning board that our website announces that so that residents outside of that, I mean, when I think about 200 feet, that to me doesn't seem like a lot and I think people beyond that scope may be concerned. That's fine. Thank you, I would really appreciate that. I have one question for you, Jeff. Will the construction of the new road require acquiring any additional property? I know at one point there was talk of possibly acquiring some other residences. Yeah. I don't know if you've made that determination no. yet. It does not require that. So you're going to look at it? I'm going to look at this to make sure it's consistent. I feel great about you looking at it. Yeah. Is there any provisions for a tall fence along the ninth hole? Because I slice my drive. These <laughs> <laughs> people that live right here, Jeff. Can I ask you what? I don't know who would answer this. Who, who would have a sense of what the projected value pricing of these homes would be? I guess the president would, right? Yeah, we're, we're projecting uh, between 700 and 750,000, um, and then depending on what kind of options and lot premiums so people are willing to pay, uh, it's certainly possible. That would be uh, that would be a nice, <laughs> a nice thing. Consistent yeah. with the summit project. Pardon. Consistent with your summit project. Uh, very consistent with the Short Hills project. Well, Short In fact, Hills the, the displays that you've been given tonight are they kind of look very photos familiar. taken yeah. from Short Hills. Not a whole lot of originality, huh? That. Going with what works. Thank you. Got a million bucks. Mr. Chairman, I'll report back to you and um, about my findings <coughs> for the next meeting. I'll get put together a draft resolution for you. Thank you. That's great. Thank you, Will. Thank can, you. I, can I ask one more question? The, the, the pool. The pool that's being discussed. That's is that going to be accessible to all the residents or who, who's going to be using that pool? The, the pool and, and whatever other facilities that the, um, the golf club is proposing to build are going to be the property of the Shack Max and Golf Club. Our residents don't have any privileges that uh, unless they become a member, uh, they can be, there's various levels of membership that you can um, sign up for at Shack and Max. And I know you can be a social member or you can be a partial golf member, full golf member. Um, initially, we did work out a, um, uh, a, uh, some privileges for our residents for the first year or so. I think it's one year, right? Three years, okay. And then after that, they have to pay. So essentially, we prepaid for them for uh, the first three years. But they, they will have, they access. Would have access to the pool. Okay. Yes, and thereafter, they would have to but pay what whatever the membership fee is. But what we're being told is for the folks who are concerned about where the pool is going to go, that's something that needs to be discussed with New Jersey Golf. Shackham yes, my understanding is is they'll have a separate application, and I don't know if it's going to be before the zoning board or the planning board, but of course they'll have to speak to all the specifics on setbacks. Okay. Thanks. Any other questions? Yeah, I have one question for the applicant as well. Um, maybe applicant isn't the appropriate term here. It used to be on a land use board. Um, you spoke a little bit to timing of the road, and I was in the agreement five months. Could you speak a little bit more to timing of overall completion of these things? Um, and obviously a lot of that's predicated upon you have to go before land use board. So assuming from a date you get all your approvals, what's the r range of time frames? Jeff, I think we have that. Public public that's right in the agreement. Yeah, there, there's a maximum build out period within the agreement where the redevelopment agreement has a time span. Um, once you start building, you have to complete it in two years. Three years. Yeah, any building that we start has to be completed within two years. Um, obviously, if we, if we sell a building and start a building, we're going to finish it. Uh, that is actually a provision in the agreement that if you start it, you have to finish it. Um, there's actually a maximum there's time idea. frame seven of uh, seven years so the whole in, in the redevelopment agreement. I would anticipate a project of this size, um, if, if I was to start it tomorrow, today's market, who knows what nine months or a year from now is going to bring, um, about a three-year project. Thank you. Just to give you an idea, we're doing 30 right now up in Short Hills, and you know we'll be, we're going to be finished there by the end of this year. We only started a year ago. So Perfect. you're only talking, I think three years is inaccurate. Maybe I need it at some point to get a copy of this 
agreement and read the entire thing, but are you obligated to build out the entirety of this proposal once you break ground on the first unit by the end of that seven years? Yeah. Okay, thank you. We have to build out everything under within the time frame of the redevelopment agreement unless we were to come before the, the board or the, or the council, and the council was to extend the time frame of the agreement. And there are provisions in the agreement under which the board um, would, would, or I should say, under which we would be entitled to extensions. There are some force majeure events, like a severe downturn uh, of, of, the, uh, of, the, of the economy, um, would be one example. Um, but uh, as far as do we, we don't, there's no provision that just says, once you start building, you just have to keep building homes. Our, our objective is to only build what we sell. Understand. And we would expect that we would sell. I mean, we're projecting we're going to sell about two a month in here. So, like I said, about a three year build out. Thank you. Any other questions? Hearing none, thank you. Thank you. Thank Look you. Forward to seeing you soon. Appreciate it. Item 17, review of action items for the uh, next meeting. Do we have something? Uh, yes. Sorry. You can go through it. Before we go on to that, can I just, um, under council discussion items, can I add a comment of uh, something for discussion? Jeff, am I allowed to bring up a concern at this point? We're under council discussion items. Okay. Um, Jerry, I emailed you half in jest when I first got on the roads after the storm, but after that had an opportunity to spend a lot of time out and about this weekend. Um, Alessandra had an event, actually she had several events that took us out of the house. Um, I just wanted to make sure that you were aware there was some negative feedback from the residents about the treatment of the roads in this particular storm. Okay. My concern as a member of the council is not to critique the job that's being done because I don't know how to plow roads. I would have to assume that there would be a reason behind the way or the methodology or a need for more equipment or supplies. Is there either that I could bring, uh, these were not emails that I could forward to you, but I mean I did on Saturday in particular, there was a lot of, couple things um, with respect to equipment we did take delivery of our two new uh, snowplow trucks um, today actually so that was unfortunately we're at the mercy of the timeline there of the vendor um, that being said I did you know after receiving your email kind of do my own drive around you know neighboring towns and neighboring uh, took some pictures do I have to be what's that no um, took some pictures, uh, then I, I also drove around about 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock on Saturday afternoon, did the same thing. I think you know, what the public probably needs to see, and I'm in the process of preparing, is the is a snow and ice removal plan. So they you know, really understand what goes on and what's appropriate and what's not. Because there are, you know, there are going to be roads that are, you know, have packed snow on them. I mean, it's just a reality. They're secondary roads, and you know, the goal is to make them passable in a safe manner. Um, if it's not a bare pavement policy, and you'd be very hard pressed to find any municipality in the country that has a bare pavement policy on side roads. So, you know, and I've talked to a couple of residents myself over the last 48 hours, and there's some confusion on what they're expecting to see on the road. And I'm not dismissing yours, I don't know all of them, and I don't know the locations, but, you know, there is a procedure that's in the process of being formalized in writing. Um, I actually spent some time working that, on that over the weekend. And, our DPW is actually making some edits to it, so you'll see it all includes some pictures. And you know, I'm not saying there's never a room for improvement. There absolutely is, but I do think sometimes there's a, a misconception on what people expect to see in front of a certain road and when they're expected to see it. I think these are really fair and reasonable points. Um, you know, again, road construction is not an area of expertise of mine. I'm. Someone mentioned to me um, that it's possible that going too low could damage the roads these kinds of things. so I, I think what you're talking about a public awareness pro campaign mm -hmm. is probably a really effective yeah. um, I know that the north side roads were were not what I would have expected and my assumption based on the work that I've seen from our DPW in the past 
was that there was possibly an issue with equipment that prevented them okay. from doing the best possible snow removal after this storm. I think we got very lucky with the warm weather and the rain where, it, but if we had been faced with a really a cold spell for a while, it would have been an issue. Yeah. Um, Christmas tree removal. Are we going to mulch them? Because there won't be any gumballs on the Christmas trees. I'm not sure. I will give an answer to that. I can Thank tell you, you. I hit one of them last night. <laughs> any other? Councilman Bastine, would you like the residents to bag their Christmas that trees? Oh, that's right. Yeah. My uh, my observation is that when we're when I drive through a, a, a neighboring town, I'm typically on my way to some place else. And I'm using main thoroughfares of the other town. Sure. Whereas when I'm in my own neighborhood, I see the roads as they are in my own neighborhood, whether or not I live on a main thoroughfare or not. So I think that the education process is important. Uh, I also think that if we had an unlimited budget for snow removal, we could hire 100 trucks and have it done within the first hour of the first drop of snow hitting the ground. Um, I think we have to be able to balance what's reasonable with what perhaps our expectations are. Um, and I would be very interested in seeing the photos that you took from some of our adjacent towns to give us a good comparison of, of what the Because that's always like. proven to be an effective strategy in the past. I, I don't say that to really be facetious. You, know, you did send me an email, and I'm not exaggerating. When you sent me that email, I was, in the, I was literally on a side road in the town you mentioned. Okay. So that and, was just a random and thing. For was phone, and so. just, to, just for point of clarification, and because my very good friend, Mr. Bastine, I found that comment somewhat insulting, um, I do want to tell you that in particular, I was, we have, as the chief knows, a good deal of Scotch Plains that borders the back roads into Westfield. So I am comparing apples to apples, if you will, for the record. So, okay. okay. Any other discussions? And voicing the concerns of the residents. The, o the only item you have on your agenda as of now for the next meeting is a tax appeal. Um, you'll probably have Jeff's opinion on this issue. Um, you might see, although you approved it, a formalizing resolution with the, uh, the OEM equipment. Um, I don't anticipate anything major coming up there might be housekeeping like in that, that case in that case <laughs> the hour grows long uh, we have a motion to adjourn the uh, public portion of this meeting to go so, into executive session so moved second all those in favor I right. well can we read do we need to read that again please <laughs>